Sometimes people send us stuff. Thank you. And when you do, we open it. We call it Mail Call Monday. Here we go. Mail Monday here. Got another one over here. And this one is pretty thick. And it is $7 to ship this thing. So I don't think these would have fit into the uh, pre-packaged or the pre- uh, the fixed rate ones. But the uh, this is heavy too. So I think they did a pretty decent job of uh, packaging. Put it in paper bag. Oh, there's a book in here too. Do 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 do. This is a. Uh, Clearance price. Very, very rare clearance price. So, I don't know. They put a lot of effort into the little invoice they put in here. That was cool. I thought they were in a box, but it's more like a cereal box or something, maybe. It's just some cardboard around it, but that worked. Not so much for support, but to probably stop it from getting uh, scraped or whatever. Not much support on the corners, but didn't seem to matter on this particular shipment. Oh, this is not, not smell good. My experience with these old magazines is yuck. I should put a fan on. The dog's already looking at me funny. All right, so I think I can already see the one that I'm looking for. Oh, no, I can't put it all at the same. All right, so there's whew, there's that magazine smell coming. Boom. So these are some old American Riflemen's from 1948. And this is the one I was looking for. So all of these others are just going to go right back up on eBay, or if you're a Patreon and you want one, let me know. We'll send one out to you. Looks like these came... Oh, my goodness. These came to somebody in Illinois. They have a, an aroma. I'm going to put them outside. Woo! Whoa! Lions on that one? I guess you're... Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, there we go. Putting these outside. Let's pause this. Wow, that's... That's a smell. So I got them outside now. Uh, I'm going to let this one go outside too for a while. They're not damp, but they're not dry. And I don't know what's better for the paper, but I'm letting them dry. Woo. All right, so the February 1948 edition of American Rifleman. What's so special about this? I'm going to turn a fan on. Right, what's so special about this is uh, this was the first time that the term suicide special came into play. And a suicide special is a firearm. Well, we'll find out. So let's find out if we can. I don't know any details. I read about it. And I'm checking it out. That's cool. Some Ray-Ban shooting glasses. Some ammo let's see did we get a table of contents no words that's interesting each month this lexicon for shooters is devoted to a few words particular to the shooting game which may be puzzling to the newcomer all words defined are used in a current article Interesting. Purchase shooting equipment on a payment plan. Ricochets. Real bustable bullseye. So a little clay bullseye thing. A reactive target. So self-loaded gunnerman. The new 45 safety. Modern combination guns. It's yours for the asking. Couching the Dryden? Colt Commando Conversion. Little Eva Backwoods Gunsmithing Explosive Bullets. Shotguns are different. Tough Loads. Suicide Specials. By Duncan McConnell, page 36. Great Mistakes. So, page 36. This 
continuing on page 44. So that's the end. So it's basically a couple of uh, paragraphs. Let's just read it real quick. Harper's Weekly in 1878 printed a cartoon entitled In the Door Sport in Jersey depicts a man in a nightcap sitting erect in bed with a candle in one hand and a percussion pistol in the other hand, presumably contemplating violence and the foot-long mosquitoes flying about in front of him. Let us see. The same year carries the following advertisement. A $10 revolver for two fifty. The Alexis with Russian model stock. Full nickel silver plate and hand engraved. Further search among the opium cures and easy lessons on making crazy quilts discloses another choice item published in 1885. Good plated, good pocket plated revolvers for home defense. One dollar, medium two dollars, bulldog three dollars. These examples serve to introduce the suicide special revolver as well as the type of advertising used in marketing it. The typical suicide special was in a single action pocket revolver adapted to rimfire ammunition, most frequently of 32, but ranging from 22 to 41. Usual, though not characteristic, was the bird's head grip, normally of hard rubber or wood, but occasionally of pearl, bone, ivory, or even soft cast metal. These arms were nearly always plated, often were crudely engraved. Zoom in a little bit, I guess. Often they were crudely engraved, but the so-called engraving was chiefly a product of hand stamping with a variety of special shapes. Although apparently very rare, smooth, unrifled bores were employed on this class of arm. However, some of the advertisements made particular mention of the rifled barrels, a factor which no doubt contributed to the high quality of these guns. These arms are not without interest to the collector. Indeed, they represent a facet of the development or degeneration of the hand firearm in America. Obviously, they will never command the attention that is so justly deserved by arms made by Colt Smith and Wesson Remington and others, but their com comparative abundance, if nothing else, commands some attention. They cannot be ignored. Even the beginner with little experience in collecting arms has seen numerous examples of these little revolvers and has probably wondered what place they occupy in a reprehensive in a reprehensive collection. A word of warning seems appropriate. Of all the types of arms purchased from the individual owners by the author, the Suicide Special is the variety most likely to be loaded when, pre when presented for examination. Examine all arm. Oh, except the most likely to be loaded when presented for examination. I get it. Most likely that people didn't know to unload their firearm. In other words, uh, examine all arms with care, particularly suicide specials. Names of manufacturers uh, of these firearms are not readily asserted. The several firearms which advertised and sold these ingenious devices for home defense rarely made them. The manufacturer's name is conspicuous by its. Uh, absence on the typical suicide special. Undoubtedly, they represent an output later generation of New England manufacturers who traditionally aspired to the fabrication of wooden nutmegs. Be that as it may, these revolvers do show elements of in ingenuity, of designs that are surpassed only by the poor quality of the materials used and the crudeness of the workmanship. Almost all these revolvers carry trade names and a few show patent dates, but popularity seems to have been a keynote of the names. Here we find the advertiser's ideal, a popular slogan and a trade name all in one. For the patriotic individual were available America, American Eagle, Liberty, Patriot, Young America, and others. Empire, Imperial, International, Little John, Monarch, Robin Hood, and Union Jack would probably be among the British immigrants, would be popular amongst British immigrants. Some names placed or played upon sectional interests in this country, Alaska, Big Bonanza, Boston Bulldog, Lone Star, and Prairie King. A few faintly hint at the equity of the precision instruments of destruction, Earthquake, Little Joker, and Smoker. The names employed were intended to appeal almost every type of personality. That is rather wide coverage, to be sure, but so are the names. The proof of their great variety is the fact that no list of these names can pretend to be complete, but it seems appropriate to list those encountered by the author. The following names are furnished. 
jump back over to page 44. For reference, and there's a list of them, holy moly. This list of 116 names does not include the standard series of Marlin uh, or some others which normally show the maker's name. However, it includes names of arms produced by well-known makers such as Remington, Iroquois, Forehand and Wadsworth, Swamp Angel and Terror, and Lee Arms Company, the Red Jacket. If examples are known from the, which other manufacturers its names were omitted. The trade names such as OK, Eclipse, and Brownie were employed by other on other types of arms, but these are not part of our present considerations. The same patent date may appear on two or more suicide specials, which are identical except for the trade names stamped on the stamped on the barrel. This implies that Bullseye, for example, may have been produced by the maker of Scout. This is more speculation, however, because the inventor, the manufacturer, and the distributor cannot be presumed to be the same person or organization. Three or even more different parties may have been involved in a single model. The patent dates stamped on the revolvers are commonly 1875 or later, although dates as early as 1871 also occur. Patent office records can be traced presumably sufficient time and inclination and the names of inventors discovered, but the practice of assigning patent rights prevents accurate knowledge of manufacturer. Patents were issued to F.W. Hood, E.S., and all these other names, but these four names, it seems, only Hood was actively associated with manufacturing concern, namely Hood Firearms Company, Norwich, Connecticut. Some of the inventors may have been employees of the firms that fabricated these arms. The fitting together of such a puzzle will be difficult, however, because the parts of several puzzles seem to be intermixed and some parts of each puzzle have been lost. Among the arms collecting fraternity, one question is likely to arise. Should the suicide specials be included in a representative collection of American arms? That's a good question. Logically, it is difficult to exclude them. They are quite rare. Some are quite rare. The bullseye, for example, others such as blue jacket are rather common. Some are fairly well made, whereas others are too poorly constructed to be fired with complete safety even when apparently in good working order. The author has restricted his collection to a few of the rare and high quality arms of this category and only examples and, and only examples in almost new condition. On the other hand, when the, when the author visited the Milwaukee Museum, what? Uh, famous Nunnamaker collection included a significant number of these revolvers. So I just found out about the Nunnamaker collection. So that's the first instance of the word suicide specials in culture. February of 1948. Uh, I'm weird. I like to collect these things. I like to have the book so I can share them like this. Put it in the shelf with other books and magazines that are in the instances of when things change in our culture. This happened in American Rifleman, and it doesn't seem to have been a slight against gun ownership, but how did it, what was its consequence, what was its repercussions? Let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching. So let us know what you think. We'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video, over on GunStreamer.com or on GunTube.org. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching gunwebsites.com